Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at an additional example of using the four step process for problem solving. Before we jump into that, let's review the four steps. First, we want to make sure that after we've read a problem, that we understand the problem. That might include restating the question and making sure we understand what is given and what we're looking for. Next, we want to devise a plan to solve that problem. One of the things involved in devising a plan is thinking about your problem solving strategies and choosing one that seems appropriate for the situation. Once we've devised a plan, we want to move on to carrying out that plan. This is where the bulk of your work will actually take place. And finally, and often overlooked, we want to make sure that we look back at the process and ensure that we've answered the question posed and that our answer seems reasonable for the situation. All right, with that review in, let's go ahead and jump into our first example. So imagine that an odometer on a car has only zeros and ones. Here's how that odometer would look for the first six miles that the car is driven. For mile zero, before we've driven the car at all, we notice that all six digits are zero. For mile one, now we have a one in the far right digit. For mile two, that one now moves over into the next spot. For mile three, we have a one in the second and the first place. For mile four, we jump over. For mile five, we have a one in the third spot and the first spot. And for mile six, we have a one in the first and second spot. So the question that we want to ask given this pattern is what would the odometer look like at mile 32? Well, let's go through our process. Let's make sure first that we understand the problem. So here we have a list of zeros and ones. We're given the beginning of the pattern for the first zero through six miles, and we're going to try to understand that problem and extend it through mile 32. As we devise a plan, the strategy of look for a pattern is going to be very useful here. So let's dig into step three, carrying out our plan. So let's see if we can extend the pattern just to the next mile marker. What would the odometer look like at mile seven? Well, at mile seven, we would have a one in the first, second, and third place, continuing the pattern that we've been shown here from zero to six. Now that we have a one in all three places, what do you think is going to happen when the odometer hits mile eight. Here's what happens. When the odometer hits mile eight, because we had filled up ones in all the places we had reached so far, we jump over into the next spot. So let's look at a kind of a pattern of when the ones jump. Notice that we got our first one in the far right hand location at mile one. At mile two, we got a one in the second spot. At mile four is when we got our one for the first time in the third spot. And as we just discovered in mile eight is when we got our first one in the fourth spot. So looking at these mile markers, what do we notice about the pattern here? One, two, four, eight. Well, we might notice that each time this is multiplied by two. 1 times 2 gives me 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4. 4 times 8 gives, or sorry, 4 times 2 gives me 8. If we continued that pattern of jumping into the next spot, what do we think this odometer reading would be? Well, continuing our pattern, 8 times 2 is 16. So mile 32, noticing that 16 times 2 is 32, should look like this. We have our 1 jumping over into the far left space. So there's our answer. What would the odometer look like at mile 32? So take a second now to finish the last step in our problem-solving process, looking back. 
How did we do? Did we understand the question? Did we devise a plan that was appropriate? And does this answer seem appropriate for the scenario? Well, that does it for this video, guys. To see more examples of problem solving in action, catch us in the next video.